Uh, thanks for coming. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, so I uh, visit um, um, about a year and a half ago, um, and then I, uh, at that time, I gave some, um, uh, I gave a talk on the work that we were doing at the time. So uh, this talk is um, um, an update um, of the work, mostly the things that we've done since then. Uh, but for the benefit of those of you that might have uh, been around, um, um, I know that this is a company that's hiring a lot of people. Uh, I'll just start with a brief review of the things, uh, you know, historical review of the things that we've done in the past. Um, and then I'll, um, I'll go more in detail of the most, most recent um, um, ideas. Okay, so uh, my work, uh, or a significant part of the work that we do is um, in this area, a general area of image retrieval. Um, and the basic idea is what's usually called uh, content-based image retrieval. Um, so we want to build systems that can um, search um, uh, for images and learn to edit images. Um, and um, we want uh, to do that by analyzing uh, the visual um, contents of the images. So the idea is uh, to see what can be done uh, without relying on metadata. There are, of course, many uh, search engines um, already available that um, uh, perform image search uh, by uh, the analysis of metadata, be it uh, you know, web pages or um, uh, little timestamps. Um, that the cameras um, add to these images. Uh, but the focus um, of this area is more on trying to understand what can be done uh, by, um, <laughs> by um, um, you know, looking at the images. So um, the, um, I'll start with, uh, by giving a brief uh, description of um, you know, the evolution of the field. Um, this is a field that's relatively new, so it started around the uh, late 90s. Uh, or, or mid 90s, um, and the, the first uh, paradigm that uh, people came up with to try to solve this problem, it's what's called query by sketch. Uh, the basic idea being that you have uh, some system, um, which I cannot see, uh, that uh, has a little canvas uh, where users um, um, can basically sketch um, um, or, or, or in, introduce a sketch of um, the types of images that they're looking for. And so that was the slide that we had um, um, up um, was about. Um, it's kind of a limited interface because um, lots of times people don't really know um, um, how to sketch or they don't want to, it's too much work um, uh, to provide a sketch of um, what they're interested in. All right, and so towards the late 90s, there was a move. So this is like what I was talking about. There's a little uh, canvas where you can sketch the things that you're interested in, uh, but it's, um, it's not uh, very powerful. So towards the late 90s, uh, there's a lot of work done on the area of query by example. Um, and then since the turn of the century, there's been uh, a lot of work on what's called semantic retrieval. So let me uh, briefly go over this two in a little bit more detail. So a query by example system um, is uh, a system where that supports um, um, similarity or, or image search uh, by strict uh, visual matching. The basic idea uh, is shown here. Um, the user provides uh, the retrieval system with some example image. Uh, the system extracts um, a collection of visual features. Uh, it could be about uh, you know, texture, color, shape, or whatever visual features might be deemed relevant. Um, then that makes a little signature, um, uh, which is extracted from the query image. It's compared against the signatures of all the images that are in the database, um, and the top matches um, are uh, returned. Um, and so, um, like I said, in the late in the, during the 90s, there was a lot of work um, in this uh, domain. Um, and you can answer que ask questions such as, you know, what is the optimal uh, retrieval system uh, under this framework? And in fact, we've done a lot of work where we tried to uh, come up with, um, you know, a framework for doing this um, um, operations in sort of an optimal form. Um, most of our work ended up um, in this area of the minimum po probability of error retrieval. And this is where we formulate this um, uh, matching operation as a classification. Uh, operation, and then we can uh, ask what is the optimal decision function for image ranking uh, in order to minimize the probability of um, the matching error. Um, of course, uh, a retrieval system is not only about image similarity, so that's only one of the 
um, part of our tool system. Um, there's a whole um, other sets of uh, things uh, that needs to be done. Um, and ideally, this uh, formulation should be such that it also um, um, is helpful in the solution of those questions. So there's questions like relevance feedback, uh, you know, indexing, how do we design these um, uh, classifiers uh, so that um, uh, they're scalable and they can be applied to large databases uh, and so forth. And, it, and this um, uh, minimum uh, probability of error formulation uh, turned out to be a nice uh, you know, global solution for all these questions. Um, and one of the lessons that we learned is that uh, when one is trying to solve all these uh, problems, um, it, we, one cannot really rely on um, you know, very complicated uh, matching functions. Um, and so um, all the retrieval systems um, in this area uh, turn out to rely on image similarity operations that were um, uh, um, you know, relatively simple. Um, so here's a, um, a, a depiction of the core uh, of our system. Uh, so basically, there's uh, we have images. Images are decompo decomposed into uh, bags of local features uh, or local feature vectors. Um, there's a huge literature on machine vision uh, for, uh, it, with respect to you know, lo local features or local descriptors for images, uh, and pretty much any of those can be used. Um, and then uh, we basically formulate um, uh, the problem as one of uh, statistical classification. So we estimate uh, the density uh, associated with each uh, of these images. So we fit uh, a Gaussian mixture uh, to the cloud of points that's extracted from the image. Um, and then uh, we look at these models as different classes uh, that are available uh, in the database. Um, and the similarity function or the decision function is uh, just a, a Bayesian decision rule. So whenever we get a new query, we do this feature decomposition uh, and we compute the posterior probability um, of the query under all these models. Uh, and that uh, gives us um, um, a ranking uh, for the images uh, in the database. Um, so this is uh, uh, the you know, uh, basic um, uh, retrieval uh, query by a visual example um, type of operation. Um, at around 2000, this was the state of the art, or you know, systems like these were the state of the art in the field. Uh, so here's an, an, you know, an example uh, evaluation in terms of precision recall, uh, but the details of these are not um, uh, that, that, that important. Um, what's important is that um, you know, with, with, with a system like this, it is possible uh, to make image retrieval work. Um, but um, only for certain types of queries. And those are the queries uh, where similarity, uh, similarity literally means uh, visually sim visual similarity. So let me uh, give you some examples of this. Um, here we have some uh, results, um, uh, queries. Um, once again, this uh, query by visual example paradigm. Uh, these are like for queries. Each row presents the top matches uh, to each of uh, the queries uh, in the database. The database is about uh, 2,000 images. Uh, they're very diverse, as you can see um, um, you know, um, um, throughout these queries. Um, and um, um, once again, so the, the results are good when there's like um, um, a strong uh, degree of um, uh, you know, strict visual similarity between the query image and the images in the database. And, and notice that the system is kind of relatively good at uh, finding what are the dimensions um, of this feature space uh, along which similarity is strong. Uh, so in this case, it does. Uh, it's mostly the fact that these uh, images have similar colors. Um, for this one, you see that the colors are actually different, but it locks on the fact that all these flowers have kind of petals that have the same uh, sort of shape, um, and um, um, you know, so forth. Um, so the basic idea is that um, you know this uh, can actually work uh, fairly well uh, if there's a, um, um, you know a, a direct match uh, between um, you know the query image, the, the, the appearance of a query image, and the appearance of the images that one is trying to find. Um, however, uh, in practice, uh, visual similarity does not always correlate well with semantic similarity. Um, so here's an example of a query uh, where the system uh, fails. Um, so this is an example of a query image that has um, um, airplanes on an um, airfield. Um, and these are the top four matches um, that result from this um, uh, query by visual example operation. And if you, if you look at these images, um, in, if, um, in terms of uh, strict visual similarity, they're actually um, um, uh, reasonable matches. So all these images have some amount of sky uh, 
in the back, like the query, they have a sort of like uh, geometric structure that looks like a, a plane under perspective uh, in the foreground, uh, once again, like the query image. Um, but the fact is that for people, these don't really look like very similar to that image. And in fact, they look a lot similar than these images um, here. Um, and notice that what makes these images similar to that one is not the fact that they have sky or, or, or there's a ground plane, but as the fact that there's these little things here called airplanes uh, that um, you know, we say, okay, this is an image that has airplanes. This is an ima these are images that have airplanes. And um, you know, that happens even though these airplanes are just um, you know, a little fraction uh, of the image. They don't really look like much like those ones. These ones are yellow, those ones are white. Uh, the wings are different, they have different shapes. Uh, here there are three, uh, over there we only have one. Um, so, um, um, you know, it's a very different uh, type of similarity which does not, is not, um, you know, correlated uh, necessarily with the fact that the images look um, the same uh, from a visual, a strict visual standpoint. Um, and so that led to this idea of semantic retrieval into which the field um, has evolved. Uh, and the basic idea is that first you learn to annotate uh, the images. So given an image like this, you would annotate it with the keywords such as, you know, this, this image contains airplanes on a, a hair field. And then you would do the match uh, directly um, at the annotation level. So you would look for other images that contains airplanes um, on airfields. Um, and that's the basic uh, formulation. So we want to search, images are compositions of semantic visual concepts, and we want to uh, search uh, uh, for similarities uh, in terms of uh, those visual concepts. Um, the starting point for a semantic image retrieval system uh, is some image database which is annotated uh, with uh, captions uh, that uh, are drawn from some uh, finite vocabulary. Um, and when it, where each of these uh, captions is, consists of a number of keywords, and each keyword corresponds to a visual concept. Um, so uh, typically you would have an image like this, uh, and a caption that's uh, something like people, beach, sand, palm trees, huts, and vacation. Um, now this is um, not a very standard machine learning problem, in the sense that this um, uh, labeling is pretty weak. Um, so it's still a supervised learning problem in the sense that, you know, for each image we get a, a caption. Uh, but we're never explicitly to, to, uh, told what is the correspondence between captions and, and, uh, cap captions and pixels uh, in the image. So I know that there's uh, people in this image, but I don't really know that, um, you know, these are the people pixels. Uh, I, I only know that there are some pixels uh, somewhere in there uh, that are related to this uh, concept um, of uh, people. And furthermore, the captions are not necessarily um, exhaustive. Uh, it's, very, it's fairly hard to come up with, a, um, uh, to predict what are, what are all the words that could possibly be relevant uh, to label a given image. For example, here, uh, you know, you, you, one could say that this, is, this image contains bathing suits or something like that. But, you know, somehow the person that was annotating or labeling the image didn't think that that was relevant. Um, so um, the point is that we have to be able to kind of um, uh, deal with that, um, 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 all that uh, the amount of noise. Um, the goals, uh, well, the, the main goal is to learn the mapping between these uh, visual features um, and keywords. Uh, and we want to do that in order to be able to solve two problems. Uh, the first one is what's called uh, semantic annotation. So if I know, uh, if I, if I know this mapping between uh, words um, and features, well, given a new image, I can extract features from it. Uh, and then I can find the best uh, caption uh, for that image. So I'd like the system, when uh, given an image like this, to say something like people, beach, sand, boats, trees, and rainbow, um, or something like that. Um, and then the second um, problem is that of semantic retrieval. Uh, okay, well, given that we know how to annotate all these images, uh, then we can support retrieval by just uh, uh, matching these keywords. If I want to uh, collect, um, you know, look at a, a bunch of images like this, I can just say, uh, show me images that have people on a beach, uh, and then hopefully the system will be able to recognize, to, to, to find the images that contain um, those visual concepts. Now, from a um, uh, you know, mathematical point of view, 
uh, both of these uh, problems can be formulated as problems in statistical uh, decision theory. Uh, we have some data representation. In this case, uh, uh, images are just um, uh, collections of feature vectors uh, sampled from some stochastic process X. Um, and the keywords are just, uh, and the captions are just collections of um, uh, labels uh, sampled uh, from a random variable W that's defined uh, on uh, our vocabulary. Um, and we also know what are, uh, you know, the optimal decision uh, functions in this minimum probability of error uh, sense, both for annotation um, and retrieval. Um, so um, if uh, we want to annotate an image, so we're given basically a bag of feature vectors extracted for the image, and all we have to do is to find uh, the concept that has the largest posterior probability uh, given um, uh, those features. On the other hand, uh, if we're given um, a, a concept on a retrieval operation, um, we want to find what is the image that best satisfies uh, that, the query for that concept. Well, uh, all we have to find is the bag of feature vectors um, or image, which has the um, high, highest possible probability uh, given uh, the concept. So mathematically, uh, this um, is not very different from um, um, you know, the visual similarity uh, type of problems that we were looking um, um, at before. Um, but the problems, um, 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 of course, is in uh, learning this relationship between um, uh, words and visual features. So we need to estimate these conditional probabilities uh, uh, from W to X. Um, and that's problematically, in particular, because we do not have clean training data, so it would be relatively easy. I mean, nothing is ever really easy in computer vision. It would be relatively easy if you had a training set where, like, all the, uh, for example, if you're doing face detection, usually you get a training set that consists only of very um, uh, nicely cropped pictures of faces. Uh, but here, uh, our um, annotations are only causal. So once again, I know that this image is uh, of, of people, and it, it contains some uh, feature vectors that are related to people, but it also contains a lot of feature vectors uh, that are unrelated. So, so in essence, this is a problem of learning with lots and lots of noise. Um, so basically, it's a problem where even our positive examples are kind of um, are quite noisy. Um, and um, um, you know, some people have looked at this in machine learning, and the framework that has been um, advanced to, to deal with these sorts of problems is what's called multiple instance learning. Um, the best way of thinking about multiple instance learning um, to me is uh, through an example. Um, so we can think of each image as a box of chips, like you would have uh, in a casino. Um, so each of these uh, little feature vectors, uh, you can think of it as a chip uh, that's drawn uh, from um, a certain uh, concept. Um, and concepts are uh, really just cells um, on this uh, probability, uh, on this feature space uh, in which these feature vectors are defined. So basically, a concept uh, defines some region in the feature space, and then these uh, feature vectors are um, uh, sampled uh, from that um, uh, um, um, uh, cell. Um, so let's assume, for example, that all we're trying to do is to learn about image colors, uh, so an extremely simplistic, uh, simplistic uh, problem. So the concepts are, uh, are image colors, um, and the chips are the image pixels. So here we don't have any features to simplify uh, uh, the matter, but only that we're only really trying to look, uh, uh, trying to uh, learn um, pixel, co pixel colors like green or red or so forth. Um, now, in this case, uh, the concepts are just, um, um, you know, the, the cells associated with certain colors in color space. So, you know, the cell of green colors, the cell of red colors, and so forth. Um, and let's consider for simplicity that each image only has two colors. So here, this image has a lot of uh, pixels that are red, so it has a big stack of red chips and it has a smaller stack um, of green chips. And suppose that we want to learn um, you know, what is um, uh, the probability distribution for green uh, from, from the, this representation. Obviously, from uh, you know, one image, it's very hard because most of the stuff uh, is not actually that colored. There's a lot of uh, stuff that is relevant, this big, stop, this big st uh, stack of um, um, uh, red uh, chips. But the idea behind multiple instance learning is that if we collect um, an, um, you know, a large number of images and the background stuff, in this case the, 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 the red background, um, is actually random, uh, meaning that in different images uh, it's sampled from different processes. Um, so 
by um, um, assembling a very large uh, uh, collection of images, we can actually um, estimate uh, the probability uh, mass uh, for the concept of interest. And you can see that, so if we have a collection of images where these little squares are always green, uh, and then there's like um, you know, a background uh, that is drawn from some other color, uh, even though in each image we only have a little stack uh, of uh, green chips, as we put together this um, 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 you know, big ensemble of chips, uh, the green pile is uh, at some point going to dominate, uh, and the background, uh, on the background we're going to have basically a uniform distribution um, over um, um, all the other colors. Um, and so that's the basic idea. The basic idea is now for visual concepts, if we have a large collection of images that have a certain visual concept and then um, you know, randomly drawn backgrounds, um, then if we collect um, you know, a big um, 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 set of images, a large set of images from that uh, particular uh, concept, uh, then, and we fit um, a probability density estimate uh, or a probability model uh, to the whole ensemble of images, uh, then at some point it will converge uh, to the uh, probability distribution uh, of the concept of interest plus some background uh, distribution, uh, which because it's uniformly spread uh, throughout the space, uh, typically has um, a small amplitude uh, and it becomes, um, 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 and, and the, the, concept, the probability of the concept of interest uh, uh, becomes dominant. Um, so that's um, uh, quite interesting, and it's, actually, it's interesting uh, in part because it's very compatible with the sorts of things that we were doing before uh, for visual matching. Um, so it turns out that um, um, if uh, this uh, holds, uh, then all that we have to do, for example, to learn um, a probability distribution for the concept um, of a mountain, uh, well, is to get uh, together uh, um, um, a, a large collection of images that contain mountains on them, um, and then you know compute our features, dump all the features into a big uh, training set, uh, and fit a probability uh, distribution to this concept um, of mountain. Um, and so, uh, since we already were computing individual mixture models for the uh, different uh, um, images, uh, it turns out that this can, can be done very efficiently. Uh, so there are methods for hierarchically estimating uh, the um, uh, density uh, of all of, over the entire grouping uh, from the individual uh, densities. Um, so we don't even have to go back uh, to the feature vectors uh, that extracted from the images. Um, and so this process is so efficient that, in fact, this is what we were doing before uh, for image indexing. Basically, given these images, we we're just grouping them randomly, uh, and we are creating sort of a tree structure of probability densities that then we could search very efficiently. All that we have to, to change here uh, is to change this grouping so that they are, um, 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 you know, satisfy these uh, labels. They are compliant with these labels that are associated uh, with these images. Um, and so, once again, this is kind of a simple uh, uh, method, uh, but it turns out to actually work, um, um, you know, fairly well, and in fact, you know, better than uh, like all of the things that have been proposed uh, in this literature uh, so far. Um, so, um, over the past two years, we've actually done um, a very extensive evaluation um, of this, which will come out in a PAMI paper uh, soon. Um, and um, 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 across multiple um, uh, sets. Um, so one of the sets that's commonly used in this literature is a set uh, of images from Corel, uh, which has been annotated. So that's about 5,000 images. They have been annotated with a total of 374 concepts. Um, each image has one to five labels. Um, and uh, here is a plot uh, of some of the measures that we use. So there's, of course, multiple measures that are used, uh, both for image annotation uh, and for image retrieval. I'll not go in detail over all the, um, you know, experimental evaluation here, but I just give you, uh, I just wanted to give you a sense for the evolution that has been um, happening in this area over the last, uh, you know, five years or so. Uh, so these are, uh, here is the performance. So these are annotation results. Um, there's 260 words in the test set. 
Um, and this is a plot of the number of words that have recall greater than zero. And that means that the word appears uh, as one of the top five uh, labels um, uh, given to the image. Um, and so, uh, you know, you can see the, the earlier systems of performance was uh, pretty bad. Uh, today we have more acceptable results. Uh, so, out, like I said, out of the 260 um, uh, words, um, uh, we can do about 137, uh, which is, of course, not perfect. Um, but, um, uh, you know, um, there's uh, certainly uh, uh, progress uh, going on in this area, uh, as the uh, plot shows. And um, 5,000 images is kind of small. There's also a, um, a data set that has uh, uh, 60,000 images that was put together at Penn State by James Wong. Um, this one is actually even more challenging. It has 442 concepts. Um, the images are um, annotated uh, in a noisy way, meaning that the fact that an image is annotated with a label does not necessarily mean that it uh, has that label. Um, and um, it turns out that uh, as long as that noise is not that bad, so um, um, you know that you don't have more than one out of five uh, noisy labels, um, then the performance um, um, you know does not change uh, that much. Uh, so these systems are uh, you know uh, relatively robust um, uh, to this sort of thing. Um, okay, but so um, we've we certainly made some progress in. Uh, semantic retrieval, um, you know, in some sense, this is like the stuff that I talked about uh, last year, so I don't want to, uh, uh, you know, do a lot on, on, on this again. Uh, ever since um, then, uh, we've been um, um, trying to think a little bit about what are the implications of this for image retrieval, um, and in particular, the question of, um, you know, did we make any progress? Uh, this, um, um, did we, um, um, do we have any benefits of moving from um, a query by visual example system uh, to one of these uh, semantic image retrieval systems? Um, and one can say, yeah, you know, semantic retrieval is a lot better because we are now dealing with concepts and people want concepts. But the truth is that there are advantages and disadvantages. The, the largest advantage of semantic retrieval is that it works at a higher level of abstraction. Uh, for example, uh, because uh, if I want to learn the concept sky, because a semantic image retrieval system um, uh, you know, learns from a collection of sky images, uh, it can learn the fact that sky is sometimes blue and sometimes it's orange. Um, if you have uh, matching strictly by visual uh, similarity uh, and you give a system uh, uh, an image like this, um, the system has very little uh, uh, um, uh, you know, with which to work with and it's very hard for the system to realize that, oh yes, this is sky and by the way, some sky is also sometimes blue um, and, and, and make that sort of generalization. Um, so there's certainly an advantage uh, for semantic retrieval in terms of working at this higher level of abstraction. On the other hand, there are problems like uh, multiple semantic interpretations. Whenever we try to label images, it's kind of a tricky business. Uh, if you show an image like this to a number of people, uh, to like five people, you're probably going to get five answers. Uh, some will say this is a pe people of, of a lake. Others might say it's a pe pe uh, picture of a boat with some people in it. Others might say it's a pe picture of fishing. Um, and others might just say it's a, pe a picture of people on vacation having fun or whatever. Um, so it's, it, it certainly increases the complexity uh, of the problem. And there's also the issue of uh, the limited vocabulary. Um, okay, what if I want to um, uh, find images of uh, phishing, but the system does not know about that keyword? Uh, what do I do? Uh, query by visual example is unrestricted by vocabulary. Uh, it doesn't have any. Uh, so if I want to find images of phishing, I, I'll, I can just provide the system with an image of some people fishing. Uh, and you know, if there are other images that have boats and people standing on them and large uh, masses of ocean, it's probably going to find uh, those images fairly well. Um, and so you know, it generalizes better uh, in that sense. Um, and also, um, of course, there's no problem with these multiple interpretations because it does not really try to interpret the images. Um, on the other hand, we've already know, seen that you know, visual similarity is kind of weakly correlated with the um, uh, notions of, that people have when they uh, you know, evaluate similarity. And, and so that's, that's problematic. 
So uh, that got us thinking into, can we uh, somehow um, uh, draw uh, from the visual matching experience um, in order to try to improve the performance of this um, um, uh, semantic retrieval systems? Uh, and the main problem, if you think about all these problems of semantic retrieval, are, do, are due to the fact that um, uh, we specify queries in this very limited form where, where we, uh, we just want to type, you know, give, in, give me an image that has water. Um, well, that's the same as specifying a vector of probabilities uh, for all these concepts that the system knows about, where water gets probability one, and then everything else gets probability zero. Um, and that ignores this like rich description uh, that internally the system has um, um, uh, for the images. Um, and in fact, uh, that is the sort of the problems. Uh, for example, an image like this, it's probably labeled uh, with the system, uh, by the system as having some probability of being about water. Uh, some probability of being about a lake, uh, about people, about boating, and so forth. Um, and so all, because all these probabilities have to add up to one, all these uh, possible competing explanations uh, kind of reduce the probability of water, uh, and so that makes the image uh, a poor match uh, to that query, which um, uh, does not seem to make um, any sense. Um, and also, you know, by specifying queries in this way, we're basically just restricted to the words that the system knows about. Or, of course, you know, you can use text processing tricks uh, and kind of try to expand a little bit. But at the end of the day, you're kind of always um, um, uh, specifying the question as the presence or absence um, of some concepts. Uh, and problems like, uh, you know, out of vocabulary generalization and things like that uh, are difficult to deal with. Um, so um, it, it seems that um, you know the, the problem is that the system is ignoring this rich um, description of each, each image that the system contains, um, and so um, it's interesting to look at some of these uh, uh, probabilistic uh, vectors or these vectors of probability vectors uh, of, of probabilities which we, uh, the system annotates its image. Um, so. Um, so th this is what's shown in this slide uh, for an example image. So basically each image, uh, we extract the features uh, from, that, from it and then we um, 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 compute the posterior probabilities under each of our models, things like sky, mountains, clouds, and so forth. Um, and then um, this is basically a multinomial distribution and so we refer to these as uh, semantic multinomials uh, for uh, short. Um, and so here's the semantic multinomial associated with this uh, image. And as you can see, uh, for example, for this image, it kind of assigns, it doesn't really say specifically what image this is, uh, what type of image this is, but it assigns some probability of even having trees and uh, having houses and gardens. Uh, and then, you know, some other things that might not even make sense, like mountains uh, or grass, which in this case is okay. Uh, but typically, you get like some uh, probabilities uh, which, um, make sense and which tend to dominate. And then you get like a, a, you know, a distribution of uh, probabilities over you know, the, the concepts that the system knows about. Sometimes those uh, probabilities are just noise, uh, like mountain here, which is unrelated to this. But sometimes uh, they uh, convey important information because you know, if you have houses, uh, then many times you have grass nearby. And that might be like a good clue uh, with which to uh, uh, match house pictures. Um, uh, very briefly, another example. So this is just for mountain and park. As you can see, sometimes um, you know it makes errors like uh, uh, it thinks that this thing, this this big blue uh, patch here, uh, is um, uh, due to that it labels um, uh, the the image with some probability of being about oceans. So these probabilities are certainly noisy. Uh, it's not like we can ever, uh, you know, we will ever be able to come up with a, a perfect labeling system um, that can, um, um, you know, give us a probability distribution um, which makes absolute sense. Uh, but altogether, there's a significant amount of information um, uh, which is um, um, useful, and just trying to restrict that to a single uh, label or a couple of labels, um, uh, it's usually not a good idea. So this suggests um, uh, an alternative, um, um, you know, form of retrieval. Uh, once again, um, a simple idea, uh, which is um, what we call query by semantic example. Um, and here, um, instead of words, as is usually done in the retrieval paradigm, uh, the user, uh, we go back to the, having the user provide an example image. 
Um, that image is then labeled uh, with this uh, semantic multinomial, so with the posterior probabilities of all the concepts that the system knows about. And then these semantic multinomials are then matched, this semantic multinomial is then matched to the ones that were previously extracted um, uh, from um, 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 the database. Um, and so if, you, if you're an information retrieval guy, this is similar to query expansion, uh, but it's kind of a, a funny sort of type of query expansion where we're basically um, using an image uh, and then uh, the image gets expanded uh, as a vector of probability uh, along all the semantic concepts uh, that the system knows about. Um, so what are the advantages of doing this? Um, well, as an extension of uh, standard retrieval, now instead of just giving uh, a couple of keywords, uh, we give a specification as a complete uh, probability distribution over the set of concepts uh, that the system knows about. And this uh, basically eliminates the two main problems that we were facing. Uh, first of all, if this image uh, is as multiple interpretations, well, the system will assign those multiple interpretations to it. Uh, internally, it will represent this image uh, with some probability of being lake, water, people, sky, boats, um, and whatever. So we don't really, we're not really nailing down what the query is. Uh, we're kind of just giving the system an example, and then we're letting the system figure out in its in own internal representation uh, what are the possible interpretations that uh, this image has. And also, um, it allows us to deal with the uh, um, uh, semantic space, you know, outside of the semantic space issues or, or out of vocabulary words. So I no I'm no longer saying that I want an image of phishing. I'm just showing the system an image of phishing, and I'm letting, once again, the system translate that uh, to whatever internal description um, um, it has. Uh, and so because of that, um, you know, we have much better ability to deal uh, with these two problems. When compared to the query by visual example um, that uh, you know, we were doing initially, well, it's the same paradigm, so it has all the advantages of query by example. But on the other hand, we're now dealing with a semantic feature space. Uh, so it's like we were doing the matching operation, but now at a space that has a higher level of abstraction. Uh, and for example, where, for example, you know, sky can be both blue and um, orange. Um, and so that has uh, typically better uh, generalization. Um, so it's actually interesting to look at this um, semantic space. So basically what we're doing is um, uh, the space is the simplex um, of uh, posterior complex probabilities. Um, and each image is basically represented as a point um, on this simplex. Uh, and because we know how to measure distances on probability simplexes, um, even op operations like measuring similarity and so forth are kind of trivial, and there's you know, many well-known solutions for this. Uh, so we tend to use the callback level of divergence as, as our measure um, of similarity in this simplex, but you know, whatever other measure um, of uh, distance between probability distributions um, could be used as well. Okay, so um, the main question then is um, generalization. Um, so how do these um, uh, systems generalize? How, how, how are they um, able to deal with these uh, types of problems that I've mentioned? Um, and there are two types of generalization problems, or there, there are two types of um, 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 classes of uh, queries. Um, on one hand, we have what we call um, queries that are inside of the semantic space. On the other hand, we have queries that are outside of the semantic space. So what are these? Uh, so if I have a system that um, you know, has been trained to know about mountains, cars, and so forth, if the query image is an image uh, that contains mountains, then that's basically inside the semantic space. The concepts of interest are concepts that the system knows. Um, if the image is an image of phishing, and I never trained the system uh, to recognize phishing images, then uh, you know, it's outside of the semantic space. Um, and so in terms of the generalization, uh, we already saw that query by visual example doesn't care about this. It has no notion of uh, spaces. Semantic retrieval uh, only works inside uh, this um, uh, semantic space. And uh, the question is how well does that, this query by semantic example do, uh, both inside and outside? And so um, that's uh, something that we've been um, looking at over the past six months. Um, and here are some um, uh, results uh, in terms of performance. So let me show you first performance inside of the semantic space. Uh, so once again, we're using this uh, set, uh, the Corel 50 uh, set. Um, so there's, of course, a training set and a test set. 
Um, but um, the images on from from both um, are images of the same concept, and so and for that reason, we say that this is uh, inside of the semantic space. So the queries are inside of the semantic space. Um, and uh, here's the curve of the precision recall uh, for the system. Um, and um, as you can see, so in in blue we have the performance of query by semantic example. In green, the performance of uh, uh, query by visual example, um, and um, as you can see, there's um, you know a, 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 a significant uh, improvement um, of precision um, at all levels of recall. So this was uh, more or less expected, and this just reflects um, you know the fact that um, this uh, semantic representation has higher level um, abstraction. You know the fact that it knows that sky can be blue um, or orange. Um, so that's, that was expected. More interesting is the performance outside of the semantic space. Um, and here, we're once again training the system on this Corel 50 set. But uh, both um, um, the retrieval uh, database, the, the database that searched, uh, and the query database, the database of queries, uh, are images uh, that have concepts which are not in this training set. Um, and uh, we've obtained this uh, data set uh, in one case, by you know downloading images from Flickr, uh, and in another case, by uh, you know looking up some further classes um, of Corel, uh, which were not used to train the original system. Um, and so here is the uh, performance of the first experiments that we did in this area, um, and the results were a little bit uh, uh, disappointing. Uh, so as you can see here, see here, the performance does not change that much from one training set uh, to the other. But basically the conclusion is that um, outside of the semantic space, there's no um, advantage for, doing, for using the semantic representation. Um, and so this is kind of um, um, uh, not very exciting because, um, you know, okay, we know that there's some advantage. We've seen that there's some advantage inside of the space, but most of the queries are probably going to be outside of the space um, um, anyway. Um, so, so this was um, a bit problematic. So that led us to look more closely uh, at these um, uh, labelings that the system uh, produces. Um, and, and here is a typical example from a, a class outside of the space. So this is a class of commercial construction that the system does not know about. Um, and um, it's, it's fairly typical uh, in terms of um, uh, um, uh, what happens. Um, so what happens is that these probability estimates are, in, are noisy, like I said. Um, if you look across the set of these images, uh, the correct labels or the best labels uh, uh, for these images, they kind of consistently appear uh, among the top 10 or 15 um, uh, labels for each image. Uh, so in this case, you have things like people, buildings, streets, um, and even tables. Um, you know, it's kind of a, these guys tend to be sitting on things that uh, look like tables, so uh, it's kind of a decent um, uh, label for this image. However, when you look at each image individually, there's, um, um, uh, the correct labels do not always appear at the top. Um, and if you look at any particular image, uh, there's the probability of an, um, a random label just creeping in um, is uh, not irrelevant. Uh, so you get uh, things like water, boats, tree, uh, restaurants, sky, um, and things like that um, that creep in, but those creep in more or less um, uh, randomly. Okay, and so um, 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 one can think of this again as a problem of multiple instance learning. Um, so what you have now is a collection of semantic uh, multinomial distributions, where part of the distribution, part of the probability is the probability of the concept of interest in this uh, little diagram, the green and blue bars. But then there's a bunch of probabilities uh, that are that just appear and are basically just um, um, uh, appear randomly. Um, and so, um, you know, from this um, um, a principle of multiple instance learning, um, uh, it should be the case that if we collected a large number of these uh, and we computed the overall uh, probability over the whole ensemble, uh, this thing should converge once again to the probability distribution of the concepts of interest uh, plus, um, you know, some uniform uh, distribution um, um, uh, that's just roughly um, equal for all other um, uh, concepts. Um, now, it turns out that for multinomials, this uh, sort of operation is extremely simple to do. All you have to do is average them. Uh, so it's literally just like a, you know, a noise uh, cleaning type of operation. You just have to compute uh, the mean semantic multinomial. 
Um, and so, for example, in this image construction example, if you do this for all the four or five images that I showed you, um, you see that like people uh, becomes like very predominant as the main uh, label for this image. Then there's buildings, street. There's kind of this bogus label with this statue. Then tables, and then there's a bunch of other things that appear. Uh, they have much smaller uh, probability. Um, so um, uh, you know, uh, so there's a total of 371 ve concepts. So you know this this is really just the top ten annotations. What, why does it have a rest Well, that's 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 another interesting. Okay, so the question is, uh, why is there a restaurant there? And that's another, okay, let's save that question for the end, because that's something that I want to talk about, uh, actually. Uh, uh, because it has to do with the fact that this, a lot of time, uh, does, uh, you know, contextual sort of associations. So here for this image, um, you know, if you look at the uh, label table, uh, it's actually not uh, that bad of a label, because these people are, you know, standing on, you know, they may not be called tables, but they look like tables. Uh, and and uh, the, what the system has learned is that when you have a, an image that has a lot of tables, then there's this, uh, you know, a significant probability that it's about restaurants as well. Uh, okay, um, and that's, uh, sometimes that can actually be very beneficial, and, and sometimes that's actually what allows us uh, uh, to do these um, operations. But I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that um, at the end. Okay, so uh, the basic idea then is uh, let's, because this is easy to do, it's just averaging these semantic multinomials, uh, let's just instead of using one single image, let's use um, you know, a, num a query composed of multiple images. Uh, so we collect these images, we compute their semantic multinomials, um, uh, we compute the query semantic multinomial, which is just the average of this, and then we use that uh, to search uh, the local database. Okay, and so it turns out that when we do this, um, we have a very significant gain. Um, so here are uh, numbers of the mean um, average precision as a function of the number of query images. And once again, uh, so here in blue is square by semantic example, and in red is square by visual example. Um, you can also do query averaging for images and visual matching, so uh, you know it's, uh, um, 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 you can try it in that domain as well. It turns out that, um, as you can see for this um, um, uh, semantic representation, um, there's an increase up to about seven or eight images, and then the performance is more or less stable. Um, while uh, for a visual example, we don't really see any improvement. Um, and um, in fact, the performance tends to decrease uh, as one um, increases the number um, of examples. Um, if you look in more detail, uh, one can see that this um, um, improvement it happens at all levels um, of precision, or uh, the improvement in precision happens at all level of, uh, levels of recall. Uh, and typically, two or three images um, in the query are enough to make up most um, of the gain. Um, and furthermore, these observations are quite consistent across data sets. Um, so here are results. So these are the, the, here are, are, are plots of precision recall uh, inside of the semantic space uh, and on the two data sets outside of the semantic space. Um, and as you can see, uh, so the comparison to query by visual example uh, is shown here in, in, in green, uh, query by semantic example in blue, uh, and again um, is uh, significant. Uh, these are uh, tables of mean average precision, and you can see that the increase goes from 30% to uh, 100%, meaning that the mean average precision actually doubles. Um, so this yeah, so this, um, we did like the, um, the best performance that we could get, I think it was like uh, up to five images. So this is the best precision recall curve in both cases, using up to five images. No, the single example you, you don't, single example is this. Okay, you don't get any, there's no difference between inside and outside of this, it's outside of the semantic space, you don't get any advantage. Okay, so this is like just mean average precision, um, and these are, this is the same, but you're showing a precision recall curve for the, you know, the top performance. No, this is inside, so this is inside here. And this is outside. Okay, so the question was um, if these plots are, uh, it's kind of a, uh, uh, if these plots are uh, inside or outside of the space. 
This one? This one, this one I'm actually not sure. Um, I think it's probably outside, but I'm not sure. I, I have to look, to look it up. But, but you know, the basic idea is that it doesn't make, uh, it, we don't see any change, any differences. That's, that's the, you know, the, one of the most interesting conclusions. As you can see, I mean, these plots are pretty similar, you know, across data set. This is Flickr, this is Corel, uh, this is Corel inside of the semantic space, and, and, and they're very similar. Okay, so you can ask the question, um, is it really the semantic structure that's, um, 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 you know, leading to this improvement? And, and one of the nice uh, properties of this framework is that it allows us to explicitly ask that question because, remember, um, at the end of the day, we just using this um, uh, probability distributions, the representation uh, for query by visual example and query by semantic example is basically the same. Um, and we can test what if we completely mess up the, the semantic structure by estimating this so-called semantic models from groups of random images. Okay, so um, let's disrupt the semantic stru structure. Uh, and what you see uh, is that, so that's shown in red here, uh, the performance drops uh, quite significantly, uh, and it's inferior uh, to the performance of query by visual example. So there's certainly a, a gain there, which is significant uh, due to the fact that we're doing this representation at the semantic uh, level. Um, okay, so that's um, uh, you know the bulk um, of the message. Uh, there's uh, there's this um, question left, uh, which uh, okay. There's this um, uh, question left, which is um, how do we get these query images? And that's always a, a question for query by example. Um, and uh, we're just starting to um, work with this, uh, but see, because now the examples are semantic examples, we should be able to kind of be, um, you know, find good examples by just using a regular search engine like like Google Search. So here's a, 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 a you know, a, a, what the system that we're building. Uh, so there's, you know, we use Google Search to kind of find a collection of images. So suppose you want to find pictures of your, you know, a wedding that you have attended, uh, you know, next to the Eiffel Tower or whatever. Uh, so um, we use the Google search engine to find pictures that have the Eiffel Tower on them. Uh, then some, there's some intermediate stage that kind of gets rid of cartoons and things like that, graphics and things like that. And then we use these images to query our local database. Okay. So from the point of view of the user, uh, this is once again just semantic retrieval. So the user doesn't really have to uh, you know, worry that much about gathering examples, which is always a hard task. Because basically the search engine is kind of translating this textual query uh, into a collection of uh, images that then we can use to search our system uh, using this query by semantic um, um, example paradigm. Um, and so we're, you know, a very, uh, this is very recent thing uh, my student put together last week. Uh, but we're, we're literally like starting to build this. Uh, and um, these are some images that if you go to the Google web page, they might still be the top matches for nesting birds. Uh, and so we fed those images uh, to our search engine and uh, you know, our internal database. Uh, and that's uh, the stuff that, that comes out. So this is the basic idea of you know, using um, like Google as a, a translation engine uh, between like the, the you know, the, the, the high level uh, representation at which people um, uh, like to work, which is, you know, text or textual queries, um, and, um, you know, a local database which is not annotated, um, uh, you know, at least not manually annotated. Uh, but so the, so the basic idea is, um, you know, using um, 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 query images themselves as queries uh, to search the local database. Okay, so. Um, Somehow it looks like I lost um, my uh, my thing there. Uh, so I just uh, wanted to finish um, anyway uh, by with the conclusions. Um, so um, you know there, the, the basic idea I think is that there's been some interesting uh, developments in term, in this in this area of image search. We certainly have not solved the problem yet, uh, but I think that this uh, kind of gives an idea of the progress uh, that has been happening. Um, uh, we, I started by talking about this progression from you know, sketch-based interfaces, which are not that useful, to then uh, you know, visual examples, semantics, and now we're proposing this notion of semantic examples. Uh, query by semantic example, I'm, I'm, you know, I think it uh, can be a pretty powerful when combined with this idea of multiple instance learning. 
Uh, one theme that has um, you know, emerged, I haven't really talked about that much during the talk, but as if, you know, we've consistently seen in our work, um, is that uh, typically the simple models, uh, using simple models learned from lots of data and, and, you know, and, and careful parameter tuning and things like that, uh, tend to work a lot better than you know, very complicated probabilistic graphical models and things like that. Um, so we've, we've um, um, all of our work, as you can see, is based on a very simple representation. There's this uh, mixture models of local features. Um, and every time we try something more complicated, uh, the performance actually actually drops. Uh, so that's kind of an interesting um, 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 you know, observation, I guess. Um, and I think there's, uh, we, one can make a case that there's an intrinsic advantage for using semantic representations. It, it, as you can see, this is a direct comparison. Uh, the visual representation is exactly the same. It's just these mixture models of local features. Uh, and the only difference between that can explain the performance of these systems uh, is the fact that we have uh, these uh, semantic groupings. So it certainly seems to be uh, like an interesting area to explore further. Um, and, it, and, and in my view, I mean, as, as a, in terms of a bigger sort of um, philosophical point, um, I think it also um, um, uh, points out for a different uh, way of thinking of computer vision than what's uh, typically done. Um, so basically here, uh, we don't really have very good classifiers. You know, we have, uh, you know, lots and lots of reasonable classifiers. Uh, and then certainly by moving on to the analysis at, in this higher level semantic space, uh, we're, we're certainly seeing improvements over whatever we, we have tried uh, along the lines of com using better models to represent the, the, you know, the visual appearance of the images. Um, and so um, um, it's certainly something to, to think about. That most of the emphasis on vision is towards building better models for, um, you know, appearance and uh, invariance and, and so forth. Um, um, and, 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 you know, and these results, um, um, our representation is quite simple um, uh, by the standards of what's being tried today in the literature. Um, and, and like I said, we haven't seen uh, big improvements in, in trying more complicated things.